Sean and Ashlyn with part two of our laying out a document, get, uh, keeping organized to keep yourself sane. And more importantly, this half of it is going to be talking about how to create a sheet layer and viewports, something that can save you an enormous amount of time, but it's kind of counterintuitive. So just to, to, to clarify what we were talking about in the last tutorial, basically I'm, I'm looking at this view. It may, I made a 3D model of a scene from a show I'm working on here. Um, and here's this wagon unit right here. That's this piece right here is uh, being uh, shown in this sheet layer here. Here's the fairy godmother shop on this sheet la layer. Um, and what I've got on here, the great thing about this is, is that even though I made the model, I built, built that 3D model, built something that looks like this here, I didn't draw anything on this layer, this sheet layer. All of this are, um, are parts of, oops, I think I just scooched my viewport over, whoops. Um, all of this are parts of are referencing uh, this image that I have on another layer here. So on layer zero here, I've taken and dropped just this little wagon unit here all by itself on its own layer. In top plan view, it looks like this. It's just sitting there uh, on its own layer by itself. Nothing else there. So I'm referencing this layer zero for all of these viewports that are here on this sheet layer. And so um, basically, I open up a viewport, tell Vectorworks what I want to be shown in that viewport, tell it how I want it to appear, and say, do it, and then it takes and references that to create all the lines that go to making up the shape. Now I came in afterwards and added annotations to it. I added the the labels and the dimension lines, and you know made a few changes, or you know added a few call out notes, things like that to it. So there's still some work to do on the sheet layer here, but most of what is happening on the sheet layer is that it's, it's labeling and dimensioning and adding in your section cuts. Um, very little actual drawing going on on this sheet layer, but so that can save you an enormous amount of time. So let me explain how this works, basically. So uh, what I'm going to do here is, is start from scratch and create a brand new sheet layer. So I'm going to go up here to the, the button that takes us to our organization uh, menu. Jump over here to sheet layers. Actually, I'm on sheet layers. This is where we have the familiar design layers and classes like you've probably been using uh, already. I'm going to move over here to sheet layers and I'm going to create a new sheet layer. So here's sheet layer. And I, I really recommend that you use the number here. We'll call this layer six here. You can give it any kind of title you want. We'll just call it uh, shop here for simplicity's sake for now. Oops, got my cap, caps on. Shop. Shop and uh, say okay there we go so now I have a new sheet layer called shop it's layer six and I'm we're on that layer so when I say okay it's gonna take us to that new sheet layer one of the things that I do you can use the the uh, some default uh, title blocks that you can get in Vectorworks but I tend to use my own and so I'll just jump back over here when I start a new sheet layer jump over to my title block layer and uh, I've got everything selected there so I'll copy come right back to the uh, the sheet layer and then control alt v to paste in place and i've got my title block and my border all ready to go because i like to use my own and then i leave um, these areas on the sheet layer blank so i can come in here and type what we call it six uh, make that six and then i'll bump it up the size up to something bigger 72 maybe uh, and drop that just on top of the title block um, in you know wherever it needs to be add the, t the drawing name here if the scale changes that kind of thing but all the sort of default stuff that's true for the whole set of dra drawings stays on the screen so that's the first step that you might want to do the next thing i want to want to do here is bring in a plan view of my my wagon so I'm going to create a viewport. So, oh, by the way, too, some important things about this, too, that, that, that I'm on a sheet layer here, so you notice that you can only be in full scale. So I can start drawing on here all, all I, you know, as much as I want. I can start drawing things, but these are going to be in full scale. These rectangles are in one-to-one -one scale, full scale. So if I hit print, they're going to be on there in full scale. That's the only thing that you can do with a sheet layer. But a sheet layer is not about drawing. It's about a place to drop viewports. So here's what a viewport is and how you make one. I'm going to go up to the View menu, appropriate and create a viewport down here. So here's create viewport. I say, all right, so now I've got a lot of things to do. So right now I could give it a name. I can also give this thing a title. So maybe we'll call it uh, shop plan. It's going to create it on layer six, unless I tell it to go somewhere else. Uh, and the important thing now is to say, well, well, what do you want to show in this view? So I'm going to click on layers. Here's all the layers of my drawing. And I stuck that little copy of my model here on layer zero. So I'm going to turn the visibility of that to, to full. You could also have um, things at gray, uh, uh, a gray visibility as well. That can be useful sometimes. But I'm going to put it at full visibility and say, okay, everything on that model is on the none class. So I don't need to 
mess with classes at all, but I do want to change the scale. Otherwise, I'm going to have a gigantic thing on my screen here. I'm going to want to change the scale, and I'll go ahead and put it at, just for convenience sake, to make it look easy on the screen, I'll put it at one inch to the foot. A little bit bigger than I would normally do, but that's fine. We'll just leave it top plan for now, and we'll go ahead and leave it for wireframe for now. And we'll say, okay. And then it'll think for a second, and then it's dropped a viewport. It has this little orange uh, a boundary around it, and there is the plan view. It looks exactly like it does on the uh, the top plan view on the design layer. So now I have a copy, basically, a kind of little hyperspace window into that um, that model, that, that that layer six of my model here. Something really really exciting to see about this. I'm going to do it now so it doesn't take too long to uh, to re-render. I'm going to jump back over to layer zero. This is back to our the plan view of that. Let me find it. Where is it? There we go. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these columns and I'll just delete it. I'll delete a column. And then I'll co come back here to uh, the shop view. And when I come back, there we go. You see that it has automatically updated for me that the deletion of that column in that viewport. You might need to click the update button here. If it's like if nothing has changed, you can click the update button, and that'll fix that'll fix that. Um, so that you will make it will show you the change. I'm just going to undo that change. The exciting thing about this is though, is that if I had eight viewports open, all kinds of different views, section cuts, and plan views, and top views, all kinds of other things, and I made a change, I realized, oh man, I I messed that up. That should have been over three inches. And then I do that, and then I come back and I select. Uh, under view, uh, update all viewports, that change will be updated in all the viewports. So that little move that I made once in the model will be repeated in every single viewport. That that alone can save you a ton of time. So you don't have to go back and think about like, oh, what every place in the drawing that that would be shown in its old position, I've got to go in and redraw every single one of those. No, it's all done automatically for you at once if you go back to the to the master model that it is uh, it is referencing for these. Okay, so now I have a plan view on this, but I so I want to add some things like. Um, um, some dimensions. Now I know it looks all wireframey. It looks kind of ugly. We don't want to leave it like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it for for uh, clarity's sake, and we'll make it look pretty later on. I'm going to go and grab uh, a dimension line. Right, this is a natural thing you'd want to do on a plate of drawing, a plate of drafting. And I know that these uh, columns are five foot on center. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the two center points of this and pull out a dimension, and I'll have five foot here. Right, except I have five inches. Now, why do I have five inches? Remember, when we created this viewport, we set its scale to one inch to the foot. Remember, our our sheet layer is in full scale. So that's a five inch line or a five inch gap uh, in full scale. As in, if I went to print this and I stuck a ruler on this, it would be indeed five inches because I'm printing in full scale here. What I need to do to actually add dimensions to this is a couple of things. Uh, you can select a viewport and right click and get to edit annotations, or you can just double click and get to this little pop up window and it's automatically choosing annotations for you. So you can say, okay, either one of those will take you to one of our orange bordered hyperspaces. You can see we're in the viewport annotation hyperspace here, where now if I go ahead and grab my uh, dimension line, and I'll snap to the center, and I'll come over here and snap to these, this other center, and I click, then sure enough, I have five foot zero inches. Now, everything I do will be in scale, including drawing new things. If I click a, uh, the rectangle tool and click a drawing, and I'll type in 12, and then I'll tab over and type in 12, now I have a one inch square on my paper, which is in scale, a square foot. If I did this outside of the viewport annotation, I would draw a one foot square on my piece of paper. It would fill my screen, basically. So as long as you're inside the viewport annotation, including anything else, you can add, well, for example, let me just hop out of here. I can make a note here. So if I just add a note and I say, you know, note this, um, and then grab it and decide I want to move this somewhere else, if I click on this guy and move it somewhere, I've left my, anything I've left on the sheet layer will stay behind. But if I put that note inside the annotation, it will move around the screen with that layer. So that's particularly handy as well. One of the things that I really like to do too is, let me get in here again, is, come on, if I can get it selected. <laughs> Zoom in a little bit here. Select this guy and edit the annotations. Uh, I can grab uh, one of our little Actually, I'll show you what I'm grabbing. Um, 
one of these little design label buttons here that's in the uh, dimensioning tool sets. And the neat thing is, is that if you get it set up right here, uh, as I've got it here, it automatically labels it for you. We called this shop plan, right? When we created this viewport, it fills it in with the shop plan. It fills it in with the scale. This is drawing number one on plate six. It's plate six because we said it was plate six, right? So it, it automatically does all that for you. You can override that if you want. I mean, nothing stops you from saying shop plan view if you want and enter and it will automatically update it so the the object info palette will override the autofill but that autofill is oftentimes exactly what you need and that's really kind of a cool thing to have it do so if i exit that for example it's what i was talking about before now i can grab this guy and all those things will move with it um, because it's on the annotation of that of that viewport okay let's do a couple more things to this um now, for example, I might want to do a front elevation of this. Because I already have this plan view on here, what I can do is do a, um, uh, a section view of this, even though I'm going to use it for an elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. You have to have the viewport selected, but you don't want to be annotating, editing the viewport. So as long as you're not editing it, you can then jump over here to view and select create section viewport. And even though we're going to do an elevation here, that's okay. Create section of viewport, and then I'm going to come in here, and I'm, I've got, uh, it's be, I'm being told to draw a line. So I'm going to, I want to do the whole front of this guy, uh, and I'm going to click right here, and I'm just going to draw a line down over to here. I'm not dragging, I'm just clicking, uh, and then I'm going to go over to here, and I'm going to click again, and I'm just going to tell it which direction do you want to point into. I'm just going to go up here, and I'm going to double click for now. And that's basically saying, all right, well, now I've created a, a, a viewport looking that way. And I can then name this front view. Oops, I've got my caps on. I got front. And then it's going to put it on layer six, you know, assuming that I want to put it on layer six. You, it's going to be drawing number two because it's the second thing I'm adding to this, but you can override that. You might decide that you want to lay out your drawing differently and you want to make this a different drawing number. That's okay. You can do it right there. We can call it front view. In fact, I'll just cut and paste here. I don't seem to type well when I'm doing tutorials. Um, so this front view, I don't need to mess with any of this stuff here because it's, unless I want to change the scale, which I could do, uh, but it's referencing instead of the original viewport, view uh, the design layer, it's now referencing this viewport. So I don't need to mess with these right now. And I can just say, okay. So it'll think a second. And when it's done thinking, I'll back up a bit so you can see it, I will have an elevation view of the front of this, the way that I've drawn it. So let me Oh, hey, while it's, while it's thinking here, this, this reminds me, um, it's really important to, there it is, um, but let me finish my thought, though, that's important. Um, I, Vectorworks is very stable. I usually have very a few crashes with Vectorworks, unless I'm doing something really trippy in 3D and I'm, I don't know, creating some kind of impossible shape, I can crash Vectorworks working in 3D. Um, However, it seems to be, at least to me, very unstable when you are working with big viewports. So I turn off the automatic backup because that seems to like create crashes sometimes that, when that you know half hour comes along and it, it wants to do that pop up. You want to back up now? That sometimes, even in the middle of something, it'll crash the, the document that way. So I'll turn that off when I'm messing with viewports. And then I just, every time I update a viewport, anytime I add something, I just go ahead and go up there and just save it. Just, just save, save, um, because it's really tricky and unstable when it's uh, when you're messing around with the viewports so for your own sanity do that all right now back to what I um, was trying to do here I've got a nice viewport it's an elevation view of just the front of this um, view so there's something I can change about that now I've done a nice job if I go back to this original one here and I edit the annotations of that all right, just double click on there Okay, now you notice here, if I go back and select my original section cut, you'll see something going on here. Grab him there. There we go. See, this this little bounding box right on here, and I've got it set to halfway. When I drew that first initial line, and I only took it up about halfway, which is probably what I want. I want to just do the front of this without the windows in the background. But if I wanted to do a true front view elevation, I could grab this guy. This is my depth of field, basically, and I could come back over here and extend it back so that it's including. So now I've got the whole view of this, including those windows. So now when I exit the viewport and I update this viewport here, I right click on it and update it. It'll take a second to redraw it, but when it's done redrawing, I will have the windows pop into view in the background of this drawing um, because I extended that line beyond the back of that view. So see, it's still thinking. 
takes a second to redraw. The nice thing is, is it doesn't even matter how, how the render settings are. Um, once you've, unless you make a change, you don't have to constantly redraw it. So you just make a change, redraw it, update it, you know, um, and now I can continue working with this and move it around and do all, do all kinds of stuff until I change the drawing in some way. Then it has to update it. But you don't have to do that every single time. You only do that when you make a, a change to the drawing. So now by extending that section cut line back beyond the edge of my wagon here, I've now included the view, the depth of field farther back to include the windows. So that's pretty slick. Let's go back to um, our, our plan view here and do an actual section cut. So we're going to go back to view with the viewport selected but not in the viewport. I'm going to jump into view and create section viewport. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing only sideways. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go over here hold the shift key down to keep it nice and straight and I'm going to just tell it to, to go this side of the view and then when I'm done I double click that again it's going to think about it for a second oh we want to there we go double click yeah same stuff but you know how to do that so I'm going to skip all that and I'm going to back out a bit when it creates this new viewport it's going to actually create a section cut I hate drawing sec section views so it's it's uh, this is a fantastic feature so let me um, let it think about it for a second and then uh, we'll have a section view. Now, one of the things that Vectorworks does is it starts with a default. For some reason, the section cuts themselves here. Here we go. I'll scooch it over here. I'll just move it off to the side of the drawing so you can see what it's doing. Um, the default view of this, where anywhere where it's made a cut, like it's cut through my platform and it's cut through the wall and the shelf and this little header bit over here. So it's cut through all those things and it's it's filled it. I've I've told it to fill it with this hatch. For some reason, Vectorworks fills it with red. I don't know. It's kind of strange. And if that sort of red fill color is annoying as it is to me, um, when you when you create a section view like we just did, Vectorworks automatically creates section style class. So if you go in here to section style and you say edit, then you can come in here and say change it from the, the bright red that it does by default and change it to, to do a basic brick hatch, an old fashioned uh, cross hatch fill there. So whatever you tell it you want to even put a picture of your kids in here, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll put that as the fill of uh, your section style and you can then say okay and replace it with whatever view view you want. So there you go, there's a section view um, just done instantly. The one thing that it doesn't do, it's why I do my ground plans by hand, is is you cannot make a horizontal section cut. For some reason, it crashes the program every single time I try to do it. What I haven't done is, you know, the, the possibility of taking your model and then just tumbling it, rotating it 90 degrees, and then it's doing a vertical section cut, only it's you're cutting through the, the model. I suppose you could do that, um, The um, but I haven't gone to the trouble of doing that but yeah if you try to make a section because you go into a view of like a grab, grab, grab this viewport if I wanted to crash the, the computer before your eyes I would go in and do a, a section cut here and draw it horizontally it would crash crash the, the machine um, so uh, try to avoid doing that but pretty much any other cut you can actually do multiple steps too you can um, it gives you the option of, of coming in and stepping and then making your your section cut line um, uh, multiple multiple legs um, that's perfectly fine as well I'll show you a couple other things too. Right now, um, I've got a pre, I've got this this already set up by default in a, in a fairly decent uh, look. But but the very first time you do it, you're going to get this sort of nasty looking. Um, uh, wireframe view, which is not pretty for, for drafting at all. You want it to look something more like this. And we can make it look even more attractive than this here. If I go ahead and grab this guy, there's a lot of things that you can do in the object info palette here. Um, so if we go down here to the background and foreground uh, rendering views of this, what I like to do is go ahead and come into the background render and select um, Fast Renderworks or anything you want, but I like the Fast Renderworks. And then in the foreground render, I'm going to go ahead and switch to Hidden Line here. And what that's basically going to do here when I go ahead and update that for us um, so it's it can be drawn while I'm talking here. When I update that, by the way, the update bar stays blue until it's done thinking, so just keep your eye on that. You'll know when it's done when that stops being blue. Um, what it's going to do is render it just like it does on when you're rendering your, see there it is, rendering. It's going to render the background of our view of our model with the fast renderer. So there it is, starting to starting to draw on the screen with a little bucket render just like it does when you're rendering a model. And then on top of that, 
it's going to overlay a hidden line rendering on top. So you'll see that in just a second. There we go. And now when you zoom into this, it just looks terrific. I mean, look at how nice that looks. Like if you go on, you know, the, the rounding of the sphere at the end of the sign, the, the gradient here on the, the sign, this really looks terrific. You get the nice sharp lines that you need to snap your dimensions to. They look terrific when you print them out, but you get all the shading, all this nice, you know, sort of tone thing. Like it came, looks like you came in with a design marker and created all these little gradients here. Um, that all happens because of this background render being the fast render works or something that does shading um, and then the front uh, foreground being the hidden line that's why i strip all the um, the textures off of it why my my uh, layer zero model is just white because if it had textures in it then you'd see because i put the right you know any any textures which is fine but it makes it um uh, you know, it's, it's just not really drafting at that point. You know, it's starting to kind of turn it into a picture. So uh, to keep it look like old traditional, you know, old school drafting here, kind of a, a, a halfway between both is to take all the textures off and then render the background and put the hidden lines on the foreground. And that just looks terrific. There's a couple of things that you might notice, how, uh, however, here, and I think I've already got them set up pretty well um, just by default. If you go down here to advanced properties, there's a couple of the things that I have set up now that you'll have to do the first time you do this. For example, I have my my line weight scale here set to five times because it's going to put everything at uh, the finest line weight that you have. So if, it, if your finest line weight is, you know, two points or whatever, everything's going to be really fine. So that when you go to snap your dimension lines onto it, they're going to be the same exact line weight. It's going to be really hard to see. All your leader lines are going to get confusing. So I come right in here and do the scale factors under the attributes tab um, uh, here. It's in a different spot in the regular viewports. I'll show you that next. Um, but right here, by just changing these two numbers, you can make them much beefier. The other thing that's going on here as well with display is, you can see I have the 3D conversion resolution set to high. If when you do this, you, your curves look all nasty and segmented, um, come back here and change this from low to high, and that will make these, your curves be nice and rounded uh, the way that you drew them, not the way that it's it's um, it's simplifying them to make it to make it look fast. This is also true. There's another way here you can do the depth here. Like I have this depth set to five foot seven inches. This is another way to control um, how much, you know, like right now I've got the window showing. Um, I did it manually by grabbing and yanking on on that control point, um, but you can also do it by a specific number here uh, in this uh, this view. So if I go here and say okay, uh, then what I can also do is um, let's see what was I going to show you. Oh, I want to show you in the other viewport. If this is a, a section viewport, so it's a little different. If you go back into the regular viewport, just a regular uh, uh, viewport, you still have these advanced properties that cut off the bottom of the screen here. But this is the only window you get for that. And here you have your line weights um, also to one, so you have more options here. But I'm going to go ahead and change that to uh, uh, to five as well, and I'll leave everything else the same. And I'll say okay. And then if I come back in here to uh, my views here and say background render, uh, you know, I'll just for time's sake, I'll just leave that off. Whoops. Stop that. Um, and I'll just add um, the foreground to um, hidden line. I'll take the background one render. And I'll just make it, uh, we'll make OpenGL. We'll try that and see if that works. Now when I go to click update, if I zoom back into my view here, so there's my OpenGL. And on top of that, it's going to put my hidden lines as well. There we go. And now I have, oh, but now, in, now in, in top plan view, though, so you can see what's happened is that I've lost the, um, the uh, uh, all the things that are underneath my walls here. So I might want to change that from hidden line to dashed hidden line, and that would give me the dashed uh, stuff underneath my view here. So if I update that again, then I'll get all my columns and things back because they'll be dashed through uh, the surface of that. It takes a little bit longer to render, but remember, you only have to render the one time. And once you've got that one render, um, in t unless you change something in the viewport, uh, it'll stay the same. You can even move it around on the screen. They won't bother uh, bother anything at all. It just uh, has to redraw it each time you, you make a change uh, of any uh, a note. So there it goes. It comes into my, there's my, my dash lines in there underneath uh, my, uh, my viewport. So again, I might want to tweak with that a little bit to make that a little bit more clear. But I want to show you one last thing before this gets ridiculously long. And that is that if you wanted to, whoops, if you wanted to do a, a, a detail, for example, say I wanted to do a detail of this sign in a larger size. Uh, you want to create a, a regular viewport to do that. So I'll grab view and I'll say uh, create a viewport. And then I'll say, uh, now I've got to go back and tell it the layer again because I'm doing a new viewport. So I've got to tell it to do layer zero and uh, I need to change the scale. This time we'll make it a little bit bigger. We'll set it up to uh, maybe say three inch to the foot. Let me go, we'll do three inch to the foot. And this time I want to move it from uh, the view, from top view to front view. 
because the front view of my model here is it looks like this that I've got on here. So if I go to front view and then I'll change my, my rendering to uh, hidden line there and then I'll say okay. Now what I've got on the screen is the whole front view. So it's much much too big at three inch scale. It's much too big to fit in my drawing. So the way to, uh, to get it to just be this little corner here where my sign is, is you go and select the viewport and you select edit crop. And right now the crop is just the bounding box of the shape. There's no object on your edit crop view. But you can put any closed two dimensional object, a square, a circle, a squiggly line, as long as it's a closed shape. So I can come here with a rectangle and just draw a rectangle right on to this uh, edit viewport crop layer here. So maybe I'll just like, like that, great. And now when I exit, my viewport is cropped just down to that area. So now I have a handy dandy um, view. Let me move my other guy out of the way here. And I've got a little, little um, handy version of just that. So I can throw a label on here and call it sign detail. And now I can edit the annotations and snap dimensions to this um, and change all the, the views like I've been doing here just with this one little viewport. It doesn't care that it's cropped greatly. If, however, you decide you crop too much or you want to change the shape of the crop, just go back and right click again, edit that crop again. And all you need to do is just change the shape of this of this box here. So if I make it a little bit bigger and I exit it, now I've got a little bit more of my sign. I've got the little, little bracket plate there of my sign just by changing that shape. Um, and by changing the, the, the uh, crop, you can show how much of whatever drawing um, is showing on your plan. So basically, once you get that all laid out here, I'm going to go back to my original one just to conclude here. Um, the, uh, whoop, well, that's the one we're working on, there, my grandmother shop. Um, you can even do like this guy right over here is um, just a right isometric rendered view of that. You could even turn back on your your uh, your textures and do a little picture of it, a little rendering uh, in the corner of the drafting. If you have a color printer and you want to do that, go for it. Um, there's nothing that stops you from doing that. So each one of these, so here's the section cut, here's uh, the uh, elevation of just the back wall, also a section cut. Um, and you can see all of these guys are on my original plan view here. Oh, I've got over here. So I've got this section cut here. Five here is referencing um, this view down here, drawing five, where it's cutting through the model. I've got one transverse section cut right here. That's this guy over here. So you can make as many of these as you want. I've even gone so far as to make a cut through one of my columns here. You can see I've got um, a section. Where did I put that? column cut. Oh, there it is, section three right there. And you can overlay one viewport on top of another one. So you can see I've got this column section cut dropped right on top of the column. So I've basically got two drawings in, uh, in the same view here, a section cut that's cropped right to fit on top of the other uh, front elevation view, um, like what we were what we first created in the um, in the little uh, demo viewport. So nothing stops you from laying viewports on top of each other. You can get all kinds of composite views, very um, convenient, very powerful. And then once you've got this viewport, you just go ahead and print from this. Again, all the little candy cane highlights go away, um, and you can print this view and rearrange your viewports however you want. And again, remember if I were to go back into to that and change actually what was happening because all these viewports are referencing that same one at layer zero um, when I deleted that column it, they disappeared from all of these views as well so that column that I deleted would be gone from here and here and here and well not there because we'd have other columns and there and there it would disappear in all those viewports when I made that change by updating those viewports so uh, a lot of power a lot of time savings if you take the time to learn how to use the sheet layers and the viewports you'll end up with a uh, a, a lot more enjoyable experience when it comes to generating the measured drawings for your designs. I know that was super long, uh, but hopefully you learned a lot and your life will be better for it.